We're here at TV Lines Comic Con interview suite with American Gods Yutide Badagi. Welcome. Where are you in this season? What do you? What episode are you on? We are very far into our season. Okay. We're very very far into it, and so it's. Uh, I can say we're over the halfway mark. The last time we saw Bilquis, she was. She she's already reached the end of her arc in the book. Like we we're right. past that. Right. But she's she's on a mission that she may not want to be on. What I love about all these characters is they're so multifaceted. Um, and in the way that human beings are incredibly complicated. And so th their motivations may be not quite what you think, and they can constantly surprise you. She's a smart <laughs> cookie, too. Yes, she is. I, I keep on saying old gods are old for a reason. They have stood the test of time. They have seen cycles come up and go down. They're adaptable. They're survivors. Mm -hmm. I love that we got to play with this in the physicality even, and even the speech patterns of, for me, Bilquis is, is like a mountain, the, you know, uh, with, the, with the age and the, the kind of uh, time process. While there might not be many words, there's a lot going on in there. And things are always about the long game versus you know, the more rapid fire in the moment. Yeah. You guys shot at House in the Rock, we saw. Oh. Tell me, yes. tell me, were you on the carousel? Yes. You know no one gets to ride that carousel, right? So talk about a whole lot of dreams coming true. Um, it's House on the Rock, if you haven't been, is a thing of absolute beauty. It's inconceivable. <laughs> Should I say inconceivable? <laughs> uh, it, it's something that absolutely has to be experienced because it's, um, I totally understand now why Neil said that he had to tone it down in describing it in the book because mm -hmm. people would not believe. Mm -hmm. You would not believe. You have to go and experience this place with your own eyes. It's, it's brilliant. Speaking of Neil, you guys have a new showrunner, Jesse Alexander. You have new cast members. There's mm. new roles that are mm. coming up. Coming into season two, if a fan loved season one, yeah. how, what's it going to feel like? They've already said it's going to be darker, a little right. bit more dangerous. The metaphor for me was that it was coming back to the same school, different class. Mm. <laughs> you have a lot of the same structures, mm -hmm. um, but there are new faces. Uh, there's some new teachers <laughs> in school. Um, everything you loved is there and more things that you had hoped to find is also are also there grammar police can you tell me if you have any scenes with ricky because they have not yet bill Clinton and shadow oh oh i said nothing you said nothing i say nothing those eyes say everything man <laughs> what no last year emily uh got to double up and play um essie as yes. well in the coming to america yes might there be any doubling this year might that be something you would be interested in doing i think that's something we're all interested in as actors i mean what's more fun than playing other versions of that self that's been created mm -hmm. and anyone that's any kind of sci-fi geek always wants to end up in another timeline <laughs> in, a, in a mirror universe mm -hmm. to play with that so that's that's something i think um I can say across the board, we all love that. Mm -hmm. And I think um, they're very aware of how geeky we all are about wanting to play around. What conversations have you had with Neil or Jesse about Bilquis's journey in season two? One thing that has, um, that has been of great interest to me is uh, we talk about multifaceted characters and seeing different facets of self. And I think with a love goddess, you get uh, the opportunity to play with different facets of love. Let's talk about Wonderland, which yes. is, tell me if I've gotten this right, um, this is a movie that you wrote yes. and are going to star in yes. and like harness the power of the internet and got kickstarted. It is you all that made this happen. When I had written it and we talked about making it, we had looked to you know possible investors and you know and, and trying to say, well, we, we want to tell this story and we want to do it this way and we we want to do it, you know, um, with inclusion in mind in front of the camera and behind. And we don't want to compromise on any of that. And as things are structured now, um, you know, not many. Uh, investors mm -hmm. really, uh, you know, were immediately able to respond to that. The people who did respond to that immediately were the fans. They said yes. 
This is the kind of stuff I want to see. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of stuff I will put down money to see. And in fact, I'll put down money before it's even completed. Okay. It was very powerful to see. Basically, we're getting to make uh, fan art, um, and it is being created by fans. It's an Alice in Wonderland reimagining. Inspired. It's uh, Wonderland seen through the lens of Hollywood. And uh, one would be surprised how uh, easily those two worlds mesh together. I know that you are an Outlander fan. Mm -hmm. Outlander and American Gods are both on stars. Yes. Um, I'm just saying, there might there be an, a, a possibility for you to, would you go over there if they asked you? <laughs> I mean, I'll try and play coy, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you and Sam Hewitt sharing a scene. Uh, Sam Hewitt, sorry, did it get really warm in here? <laughs> All of a sudden. <laughs> sorry, no, this is not on tape. Nobody saw this. It's just between you and me. You're playing it very cool. Yes, very okay, cool. Good. Yes, Sam. Awesome. I'm not a weirdo. <laughs>